That's Nick. And that's Joseph. <laughs> and today we're here to talk... Keep going. Today we're here to talk about Duel, the third film directed by Riley Stearns, which premiered at the 2022 Sundance Film Festival uh, and is being released on April 15th, 2022, courtesy of RLJE Films. You said third film? Yeah. Do you know the other two? Yeah, uh, I reviewed his first film, Faults, back in 2014 with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I believe. Uh, That's a strong name. You've seen her in things. Uh, a cult, uh, kind of a black comedy, not unlike this in a similar vein. Uh, he also did The Art of Self-Defense in 2019 with Jesse Eisenberg, which I have not seen. And now here we are. I would classify this as a very dry black dramedy. Like a dry Chablis. <laughs> like it'll, it'll, <sighs> it might get you there, but you might stop drinking it before you're done. The basic story is there's a woman named Sarah mm -hmm. who we she finds out she's terminally ill. Played by Karen Gillan. And in this world she lives in, cloning is a thing that is accessible to people at a high price. But um, we call these clones replacements. And oftentimes people will um, clone themselves and seek out a replacement when they know they're dying. So she goes through that process and gets a, re a replacement. Her backstory, Sarah's, is that she doesn't have a good relationship with her mom, nor does she have a good relationship with her boyfriend, mm -hmm. Sam. Peter. Peter. Once she gets her replacement, it is obvious very quickly that um, this replacement is kind of like has some agency, doesn't want to toe the line maybe, uh, and very quickly like sort of takes over her life. Because how it's supposed to work is that the replacement will sort of absorb the original's life and, and then at the time when the original dies the replacement takes over but this replacement is like two steps ahead because she develops a relationship with her mother she starts dating her boyfriend at to the point where the boyfriend's like well i'm not with you and you original anymore i'm with the replacement but the gag is Sarah finds out that whatever she had that was going to kill her is gone. It's in remission, and as far as they know, she will live a long, healthy life. So the doctor tells her, you should go back to the replacement center and see about decommissioning your replacement. She does, but the law says that if the replacement um, has developed enough, it can like uh, challenge that decision. It's like being too far along in a pregnancy. So the replacement does challenge it. So the protocol for that is <laughs> the original and the replacement have to fight in a duel. Mm -hmm. And so there we find out the uh, title is an interesting homonym. Right. So they fight to the death and whichever one wins gets to persist. So to tell the end, the replacement tricks the original to win the duel. And so now she gets to live her life. And also usurps the original's identity. Right. The end. Like, legally. Uh, I, didn't, I don't have notes because I just... I mean, all I thought about this was watching the trailer, I assumed this was going to be... Like, it was really going to lean into how ridiculous it is. Because the acting and the delivery of the dialogue is very affected. But it's a choice. And I appreciate a choice. So... It, it does, it is wonky, but I'm okay with that. Like, I was with it. And the humor is kind of there. It is. It's it, more in the periphery, though. Like, like in the porno she's watching in the beginning, where it's like an orgy happening at a confirmed haunted house. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or in the video she watches about replacements where... The, during the imprinting stage, like one man showing the other guy... Like which hand he, he likes to masturbate with. With a magazine called Best Butts. And or when Sarah finds out that she's going to have to fight her replacement, she, she seeks out training and her trainer is played by Aaron Paul. Mm -hmm. And the original doesn't have money because she spent it all on this damn replacement and she thought she was dying, so she's not working. So at a point, she tells Aaron Paul, like, I'm having a hard time paying you. And he says... Wow, we can find other ways that are mutually beneficial. So, of course, we think sex. But then we really find out that what he wants from her are dance lessons. Hip-hop Hip-hop dance. dance lessons. So we see them do, like, um, a session. 
But even like it's so silly and it's kind of humorous, but then because she's not that good, because she's not a great dancer, it's like okay, well this is not funny because then we were just watching two people awkwardly dance. Then I think the biggest pro Sarah the original is not very likable. She's kind of miserable and robotic and, and robotic. So then it's like, well, honestly, both of y'all could go. Like, in the world, I'm assuming that the way all these characters are acting is supposed to lend itself to maybe like, it's ambiguous what percentage of the population is probably replacements because everyone feels robotic. So, well, yeah, even Aaron Paul is right. doing that same kind of staccato, monotonous uh, line delivery that, yeah, I, I, I just really didn't like. And I, I feel like the hook needed to be we needed to care about somebody somewhere. Someone. Um, Preferably Sarah, the main character. But yeah, I, I, like I didn't care about her. Well, because even the, the concept of like having to duel to the death in a contemporary or futuristic world is extreme. Like it opens with Theo James doing the same thing. Oh, right. Yes. You know, the other thing, and it feels cheap. Sure. Which... That's okay, but I, like something needed to pop. Like it can feel cheap, but then it's super ridiculous and funny. Or it's really smart, but they just didn't have the budget, so that's okay. But I feel like it doesn't feel like particularly cerebral. The messaging to me seems, I mean, there seems to be one theme, which is that why did, or the one question this film left me asking, which could be a conversation piece, although I felt like after we watched it, I didn't, I wasn't inspired to talk about anything, is that why did this character who seems so miserable with her own life and the two people closest to her really don't fuck with her, why did she even want to get this replacement? Well, yeah, it's like, why are we fooling ourselves in these, uh, with the way that we interact as humans when it's clearly not working for us right. in the first place? Um, I, it could have leaned into that. I did like the metaphor of the final scene, which is the replacement has a breakdown crying and she gets stuck in a roundabout. <laughs> And the way the replacement tricks the original is she takes her to like a replacement support group. Mm -hmm. And then you have these replacements talking about how, like their feelings and their needs. And then... And how it felt to kill the other. So then the replacement tells the original, you know what? Fuck that. Let's just run off. We can both exist. And dumb, dumb originals like, okay, so they run off. And immediately when they get out of the car, the replacement's like... Here, let's hydrate first. Drink this bottle of water. And so she drinks a sip. You need more water. Drink more water. And then the dum-dum just drinks all the water. And then in a short amount of time, we see her start to bleed from her mouth. Mm -hmm. And that's how she, we're assuming, kills her. And then the replacement shows up to the duel. And she's like, well, I'm ready. I don't know where my original is. I guess she, I win by default. The end. So <laughs> I, th I think you really have to dig into kind of the subtext like the Aaron Paul gives her a video of a bad film called you always kill the ones you love so, yeah even that was kind of humorous because like well and it's is is that what it's it is to kill oneself which basically she's doing she's killing the self I was not I, I was a little disappointed I thought from the trailer this would be a lot of fun and outlandish and really lean into some taboo stuff and I you mean, know, maybe like it is worlds away better than Swan Song starring Mahershala Ali, which I hated that movie and how maudlin and uh, everything about that movie drove me crazy. As we did review that, but yeah. Anything else? Uh, no. What would you give it? I think two and a half. I would give it two out of five. Listen to our podcast. Bye.